Good morning, everyone, and welcome. Um, I'm Dave Vivian with the Department of State. Um, I'm a branch chief as well as a contracting officer responsible for awarding uh, contracts in support of the overseas buildings operations, uh, overseas buildings operations. Um, oh, well, I also have some folks with me here today from the State Department. I have Jennifer, is, who is also a contracting officer, and then Lori, who just joined us in the construction side of the house. So she'll be getting spun up, and uh, you'll be talking to her, hopefully, when you get involved with the State Department uh, doing construction. Um, yeah, Department of State, LBO, uh, Overseas uh, Buildings Operations, is responsible for maintaining and constructing all of our overseas facilities, that's embassies, consulates, and other facilities around the world. Um, of course, when we build in other people's countries, we like to take the same technology with us that we use in the United States. We don't want to go somewhere else's country and not do you know, proper uh, construction. So the same things for uh, sustainability and uh, energy conservation that, and, and just you know, proper building techniques that we use in the United States, we take with us to those uh, foreign countries as well. Uh, so we build to the International Building Code, U.S. Code, uh, any materials that are, are suitable that meet the specification uh, in the local country can be used, but contractors usually uh, will take a lot of the materials from the United States just to assure that um, the, they meet the specifications. And of course, that's a, a large logistics chain, so uh, logistics contractors are also needed in support of uh, our mission. This is a ribbon cutting at the new facility in Brussels for the NATO headquarters. Uh, this is just a, uh, identification of the uh, facilities that we have around the world. Each one of those dots represent a separate uh, operating um, embassy or consulate or uh, a diplomatic mission in uh, all of these countries. Uh, as you see, there's 285 missions. Um, well, you can read the numbers there. Quite a few assets, and of course, you know, we build new and we expect them to last, you know, about 60, 70 years. Uh, so there's a lot of upgrades that have to go into the facilities. Right now, we're adding a lot of Marine security guard quarters to uh, a lot of our embassies around the world. So that's going in, dropping in a uh, facility within the existing compound. And then, of course, there's upgrades for security all the time. Diplomatic security will go to a post and evaluate uh, the current threats and assure that the post actually meets those. And a lot of times we have uh, smaller construction projects that have to go in and uh, improve security on an existing compound. Uh, this is OBO's org chart. Uh, I'm not actually part of OBO. I'm uh, AQM, uh, part of the administrative uh, section of the State Department, and we handle all of the contracting for all of the department, but my specific unit is supporting OBO. So all of these sections of OBO come to us to identify their procurement requirements and then we purchase them for them. And I think these slides will be made available on the, uh, on the website. So, uh, Some of the building types, of course, we have uh, embassies, consulates, uh, office support annexes, uh, housing uh, in countries, uh, housing on the compound in countries where it's not really safe for our people to stay downtown. Uh, we do have con uh, housing in Japan and other countries on the compound, but that was just, uh, just economical. It was uh, not really a security issue in, in some countries. Uh, warehouses and shops, of course, we do have rent warehouses downtown, but we're trying to consolidate and move the warehouses on the compound, on the post, uh, just because leasing you know, facilities in a downtown uh, vicinity in these capital countries is rather expensive. And then culture, cultural heritage properties, uh, some older facilities and, you know, that, you know, ambassador residences or actually some of the embassies in some of these countries were, have been embassies for, you know, years. So these are cultural heritage facilities that the uh, uh, OBO maintains. Oh, some of the tenant operators. Uh, uh, some of the tenants that also operate on State Department facilities overseas. Uh, these are the ones that we're able to actually tell you about. There's, of course, a couple of other ones that we, we don't mention. But, um, and most of these people, they, they, they work at our embassies and they have their sections 
we, uh, you know, build their facilities for them. Uh, once the pro if it's a new embassy construction project, um, once the facility reaches substantial completion, we'll uh, tell the tenants that it's substantially complete, and they'll come and fit out their areas as they need for their special operations. Uh, and you know, we also uh, declare uh, what we, we we start the warranty at substantial completion rather than final completion because of that fact that people come in and start modifying the facility while the contractor is still finishing up the punch list. Uh, just some of the actual sizes of, of the, uh, uh, what, the, the buildings that we have around the world. I think that's just gross size from 200, uh, sorry, 2,000 gross square meters all the way up to 25, 125,000 uh, square meters. I think the largest compound we have right now is probably Islamabad. Uh, that's a new project that's uh, just finishing construction. We're in phase, I think we graduated to, from two phases to phase 2.0. A, because we needed to, the post was really insistent that we return their, their soccer fields and their baseball fields. So after we did the $186 million worth of construction that was required, we're returning now just, just doing the finishing of the, architect, of the uh, landscape and hardscape finishes. And then as you can see, uh, the number of deaths at any facilities uh, is listed there as well. Uh, that's from you know 20 U.S. personnel, and we of course have local staff supporting those personnel. All the way up to 1,350. I think that's probably Baghdad or one of the other larger embassies as well. Uh, this is a photograph of the new embassy being constructed in Beirut. That one is still moving dirt around. They have, hasn't haven't actually started with vertical construction yet, except maybe some piles and uh, pile caps. But uh, that's the facility, what it will look like in the end. Uh, like I said, it's just starting. But um, of course, the goals of all of our facilities around the world is to provide the safe, secure facilities for our diplomatic staff to work in the locations that we ask them to go to. Uh, the budget for 2018 was uh, $3.8 billion, and we've gone forward to Congress and asked for another $3.2 billion to provide the uh, facilities that we need uh, and upgrades that we need for 2019. Um, there was only a couple of pro – if you send me an email, I'll send you the awards list and a number of other listings so you can see where the, uh, the money is being spent as well as you can get the contractors, the name of the contractors that are actually supporting the mission. You can talk to them about uh, subcontracting opportunities, and you can see what contracts we are awarding when they expire. So if you're interested in coming on board, then of course you can uh, see when we'll start the new acquisition for follow-on contracts. Uh, this is a picture of the groundbreaking at Erbil. I was there a couple of weeks ago. Uh, that, it was the pre-construction conference that I went to. We always have a number of conferences uh, with the contractors, and OBO is moving more towards partnering with contractors as well. Uh, that's something new. Well, it's something we used to do, but with a couple of our uh, directors that were in charge of OBO, they kind of moved away from partnering. Now we're going back to partnering. But uh, so far, right, right now, we actually have capital security projects, 30 active projects, actually you know, in performance, that's about maybe $7.5 billion worth of work ongoing. Um, and projects range from anywhere from uh, about $6.6 .6 million to up to a billion dollars. And that's the entire project cost. I don't think we have any actual construction contracts, well, I know we don't, worth a billion dollars, but the program cost is a billion dollars. So that's acquisition of the land, um, and all the other support that's required to surveil the contractor while the, the work is going on, as well as the construction contract. A lot of people say that uh, London was a billion dollars, but the actual construction contract that we awarded to BL Harbert was like $560 million. Right, it's just the other, you know, land in London is naturally very expensive. So that was a good portion of the, of the, uh, of the total that got to a billion dollars. Uh, modernization program, uh, of course, we got to keep the projects or to keep the facilities updated and we want them sustainable. So we go in and we change uh, aging equipment out and put new equipment in. And of course, uh, we need the support required to uh, keep those uh, facilities operating properly because we'll go in 
and build a state-of-the-art facility in, in the backwoods of some you know, part of the world, and then we leave it with the facilities manager to, uh, to keep that facility operating. And of course, these are all new facilities they haven't actually maybe worked with before, so we uh, require contractor support in keeping the uh, you know, building operations and building automation systems operating as well as chillers and everything else. Uh, just some more information on ongoing projects. Uh, minor construction, we have uh, 25, 22 IDIQ contracts awarded to small business right now. Their general construction contractors uh, get awards of projects around the world for up to $10 million. Um, and they do the lion's share, the, you know, the actual number of awards made, even though the dollar amounts are much smaller, the number of awards to them, we keep them very busy. Uh, those contracts are expiring in the next few months, and we're already operating to uh, get the follow-on contracts on board. We're going to do 28 contracts this time because we've included uh, ANCs in that group as well. So we award four or five contracts to women-owned business, um, veteran-owned business, hub zones, each, each one of the categories. And now we've included, the, like I said, the uh, Native American corporations. Um, like I said, we're, I work in the actual acquisition section, so we're supporting OBO and uh, other missions in the State Department with their uh, acquisition needs. We provide the contracting support. And my particular section is the Facilities Design and Construction, construction Division, um, providing support to OBO. And in providing support to OBO, we of course use the, uh, the delivery method that they believe is most advantageous and uh, the best value to the government. Uh, that can be either design bid build or design build. Uh, we were using, when I first joined the department about 18 years ago, uh, we were using design build um, uh, to get the facilities built quickly and uh, turned over to the people to get them in safe, secure facilities. We had a really, um, large number of facilities that were not up to security standards. Uh, then, say about, hmm, about eight years ago, we moved more towards design bid build, and now we're swinging back to design build. So you'll see a lot of our projects actually being issued to the construction contractors on a design build type basis, with the AEs providing uh, bridging documents as necessary to uh, include in the RFPs issued to the contractors. The OBO director is the person who actually d determines the uh, delivery method, not on every little project, but on the, certainly on the, the larger projects. And then on the AE source selection, of course, you, we, we use the FAR, of course. Uh, so on AE source selections, we're looking for qualifications of the companies. We're looking for their ability to support us. And then uh, once we get them qualified, we'll uh, issue the contracts to them if we can agree on a price. Uh, we're currently awarding uh, 15 uh, IDIQ contracts to design contractors for, to support the OBO design requirements. Uh, that's 15 new contracts. The current ones expire in April, I believe. Uh, and we have to get the new contracts on board before those expire just so we can have the, uh, the mission supported properly. And I think we're in stage, uh, we, I, we've announced the winning contractors. Well, they, they're not having actually won because we have to negotiate the price first. But they actually have been identified as we intend to award them contracts if we can agree on the price. There's 16 of them, I think. And they are listed in this presentation. And on the construction side, of course, once again, we, we operate within the federal acquisition regulation. Um, we do uh, best value trade-off source selections occasionally, but normally it's best value, uh, sorry, it's uh, the best value is based on low price, technically acceptable offerer. And we always working to expand the pool of contractors. That's why we come to events like this. Uh, unfortunately, some of the OBO folks that were intending to come couldn't come for whatever reason. But, uh, you know, if you send us an email, we'll get you in time contact with the proper um, people within OBO to help review your qualifications and uh, get you on board as part of our team. 
Uh, once again, we're going back to standard embassy design as well. Um, it, standard embassy design is not that the buildings will all look exactly alike. It's just the, uh, really the, the number of desks that are required will depend on, on whether it's a small, medium, or large. Uh, makes that determination. And then uh, we will what, revise the building, the exterior and interior of the building to, uh, to uh, mimic the local conditions or the local atmosphere in the host country. So, I mean, they, they will all won't look like this. They'll be considerably different. And then when we're actually, when OBO is actually starting to plan a, a project, they'll st start with the uh, space requirements program and then work from that to help develop the, uh, the, the, what, the sizing and right sizing of the uh, facilities in uh, the country that we're building the embassies and consulates. These are some of the buildings that we have uh, constructed under the standard embassy design program. And as you see, they are considerably different. These are some of the buildings that were uh, previously constructed uh, some years ago. And these are some of the current facilities, not necessarily developed under the embassy, um, um, standard embassy design program, but uh, these were standalone uh, uh, embassies that have been developed to uh, you know, suit the requirements of the specific countries. And some, most of these were recent awards uh, this year or uh, last year. Uh, just starting construction or just starting mobilization. Oh, these are the uh, current IDIQ contract holders uh, for new design uh, construction. If we're actually going to build a new building that needs to be designed uh, from scratch, we'll use uh, any one of these five IDIQ contract, contract holders to actually give us the design for the uh, project. And these are some of the recent designs that have been delivered and uh, recently awarded. Some of the modernization projects that are going on right now, uh, we do, OBO felt uh, a number of years ago that they wanted to award um, five IDIQ contractors to AE firms for new construction and five IDIQ contracts to uh, AE firms for uh, remodelization and building upgrades, not new construction. So uh, that's what we did, but now they fig think that, you know, they weren't taking the, uh, the, what, the, the full benefit of the capabilities of all the firms. So we're going back to uh, just awarding, you know, straight contracts for AE services, AE design services, and then we'll just uh, pick the best contractor suited for whatever, whichever project is, is being considered at the time. It won't be new versus um, uh, remodelization type work. And like I said, this, this is the listing of the 16 contractors, 16 AE design contractors who will be receiving awards, hopefully, <laughs> when we uh, are able to negotiate a, a fair and reasonable price with each one of them. All of them have been through two phases already, uh, initial technical qualifications, and then a, uh, a, we went to a, um, yeah, interview was the second phase. Uh, I'm thinking of the listing, what's the listing? Um, the shortlist. Short yes. <laughs> we issued the shortlist at each one of these phases. And finally, we're down to the final 16 that we intend to award contracts to. We have their pricing already. We're reviewing that and getting it audited. And once we complete that process, we will begin awarding their contracts. So if you're interested, you can uh, contact some of these uh, firms and see if you can get on their team for designing the uh, uh, Department of State's overseas buildings needs for the next five years. These are all five-year contracts. Uh, we also have AE Support Services IDIQ contracts. These are awarded to uh, AE firms and they don't do design. Uh, we require them to do other things that AE uh, serv services contractors provide other than design, such as doing a study or an investigation uh, of our existing facilities just to make sure that uh, you know, they, they meet the requirements and that type of thing. And these contracts are expiring 
in 2019, late 2019. So you'll see a Fed Biz Ops come out uh, for the uh, uh, replacement of these contracts uh, very shortly. And also, uh, we have a, depart, uh, a section within uh, OBO that handles projects in um, what uh, uh, special locations, I'll call them, uh, like Moscow in China, where we have special security requirements that need to be incorporated into the building. It's normally a top secret requirement rather than a secret requirement. So um, we uh, require a different set of AE firms because we would like to keep things at the lowest security requirements for the contractors as much as possible. Um, the general uh, requirements for, a, uh, for design and construction of a new embassy compound is secret, but these people handle the top secret uh, aspects as well. Um, the, we keep it as secret. Uh, the only way we can keep the normal embassies at secret is we take the telephone installation requirements out and we take other telecommunications final terminations where it's actually meeting the uh, the contractor will install all of the electronic equipment, but they won't actually uh, make the final connection. We'll have a top secret contractor come in and make that connection. And that way we can keep the rest of the entire project at a secret level. It increases the competition, we think. Uh, some of the opportunities, like I was saying, um, we have uh, just a myriad of IDIQ contracts awarded for various uh, uh, support requirements to OBO, as well as the construction and the uh, architectural uh, engineering requirements. As you can see there, the commissioning uh, uh, engineering services contracts, uh, AE support services, scheduling uh, consultants. Um, we're also adding one uh, now, as you see down towards the bottom, third from the bottom, it's a constructability review. We would like to uh, have contractors assist us in our review of the uh, AE submittals to us to help us ensure that the contracts are, or, or that the design documents are actually, actually constructible. Uh, we've had a few issues where um, you know, the design may have had a bit of a hole in it. And of course, once we start construction, then it's, a, it's, uh, it's always a tough you know, issue to get the design corrected once the con construction contract is awarded. And as you see, fire systems, just, just about everything that, uh, you know, a small town would need to support, uh, uh, you know, its operations. We have IDIQ contracts for these. Uh, there'll be a multiple award IDIQ contracts, so some things are competitive. Not necessarily everything. Some of the fire systems will send just one fire contractor out to help assess the requirements of a uh, particular contract. And they also go out with us on the new construction to help us, you know, surveil the contractor's installations as well. Same with the commissioning agents. We get the commissioning agents involved and the scheduling contract er, contractors involved immediately when we award the construction contract so that they can assist us in, with, you know, scheduling analysis that the contractors are submitting as well as, you know, the commissioning services as the uh, building uh, is constructed. Okay, and this is my contact information. Uh, once again, I'm Dave Vivian. Uh, Chrissy Fouché is the public affairs person, uh, lead person on the OBO side. Uh, you can contact her as well. Uh, we do sessions called one, OBO 101s. Uh, if a contractor is interested in working with OBO and would like to find out about OBO's internal operations and what their actual uh, needs are, they can set up a 101 session with Chrissy Fouché and her team, and then we'll call in. Once we know your capabilities and what you would like to get involved with, we'll, uh, she will form the uh, necessary OBO team, and they just call, come in and talk to you and on a one-on-one uh, session um, uh, to explain wh where you can probably fit into the organization. And then, once again, uh, OBO does post uh, certain listings on the uh, on the web, and you can get to them at these locations. Uh, you can also send me an email, and I will uh, respond with uh, whatever listings uh, I think you require. Normally, after these uh, uh, presentations, we'll go back to the office, and the current awards list, the current uh, 2019 acquisitions list, 
uh, and any of the other uh, contract listings that we have. We put those in a zip file. Somebody sends us an email from this uh, um, uh, conference and we'll send those listings to you and then you'll know which, which contracts are expiring, which ones are coming on board, and you can see the contractors and try to get opportunities that way as well. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Okay, sorry. <laughs> no, that, that wouldn't be us, but the local embassy, you know, the, the, the embassy itself there has an economic session and also a group that helps American businesses get involved in the country. So when we, like, announce a project, you know, the, uh, the 2019 acquisition list is available so contractors can see where the projects are going. So anyone interested can go down there now and start their due diligence, including talking to the... Uh, the local embassy and the offices in the embassy on how they can get uh, license and you know get the necessary. Uh, uh, you provide the resource tools for that. Pardon me. You provide the resource tools for that, like the link, the contact information. Uh, no, it's, it's if you go to the website, all the embassies have a website. Yeah, so you just go to the website for the local embassy, and then you talk directly to the embassy. Okay. Right. No, no, we don't. Right. Um, yeah, what, what we do normally do is when we announce a project, uh, we'll do a initial, uh, well, with the architectural engineering firm that's doing the bridging documents or the full design, they'll do an um, uh, initial planning survey. So they go down and they kind of, you know, get with uh, Deloitte or other people within the country to... Uh, get what's actually required to build a building in the country because if, if they can't really design it if they don't understand the design requirements in the country and they, what, what uh, building permits are required and everything else. So they get a uh, consultant to help them, you know, weed through all of that. And then they will uh, help us design it. They will give us the uh, initial planning survey and we'll share certain parts of that with the construction, with the contractors we're asking to go into the country and build a facility for us. But I think uh, additional to that is the, uh, the local staff at the embassy who are tasked with helping uh, U.S. companies get involved in the country. Right. Okay. Uh, well, that concludes the formal part of my presentation. Are there any other questions? Yes. Yeah, it doesn't pertain to building overseas, but yes, uh, all of the materials that we use have to meet uh, U.S. specifications. Um, you know, a lot of contractors will buy, you know, the drywall and ship it over. They buy uh, a lot of the materials and ship it over. Certain materials uh, that are destined for uh, secure areas have to be shipped secure, so they're going to buy it in the United States from a, from a secret, uh, met, uh, secret uh, qualified manufacturer. Uh, and then they'll send it to their CRP, which is a consolidated shipping point. Uh, they consolidate it in the U.S., and then they ship it overseas. Any of these projects have thousands and thousands of containers coming from the U.S., and, of course, they have to use U.S. flag vessels as well. Um, some of the materials can be bought locally, um, but that's kind of far in between because contractors don't really want to go into the expense of trying to show that that material actually meets the specifications. They'd rather just, you know, just use the materials from the United States. Of course, if you're building in Germany or, you know, England or, you know, one of the other developed nations, then you might find more materials 
uh, within the host country. But most of the materials on, on the average project comes from the United States. Yes. Oh, yes. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, sorry. I'm going to be making a presentation in uh, Tyson's, Virginia on uh, November 15th. This is uh, Oconus best practices. Uh, some of the pre best practices that our contractors are using to help them successfully complete projects around the world for us. Pardon? Okay. Right. <laughs> that was a, that was my commercial bit there. <laughs> okay. Uh, no other questions. I, I just got Rich Bennett from the Department of State. We also host in spring, in May, and in February, we have a conference called Oconus Conference. Where we have people from all across the country from all over the country come together and we talk about And, you know, like I said, this is this is an engineering conference, so we talk mostly about construction. But, of course, the State Department needs the full gambit of, um, you know, contractors to support our mission at these facilities overseas, IT services, you know, um, O&M services, just just the full range. So if you're inter not interested in the construction side, then there's plenty of other work we can we can get you uh, started with as well. OK, uh, any other questions? All right, well, thank you for coming. <laughs>